Welcome to another video of my NIMP for Beginners video series, Reference Objects. Before we begin with the topic of this video, we will switch from using the current default garbage collector for the soon to be default brand new garbage collector called org. To do this, open the file explorer, create a new file, call it config.nim with an S and in it, write the following parameter gc orc and save it if you do not have autosave enabled and then close it. Now the topic of this video, reference objects. Reference object definition. First off, use normal plain non-reference objects the vast majority of the time. Now here is a sample code of both normal object definition, normal object and a reference object definition. The only difference between them, as you can see, is ref keyword here. Reference objects are similar in function to normal plain non-reference objects, but they have a few key differences. They are allocated into the memory on the heap. More on that later. They do not need to use the var keyword when being passed to procedures as a parameter. Changing a variable, for example variable A, containing a reference object, will change the value of variable B if it references points to the value of variable A. For example, this sample code. Here I have made a person A is person ref with name and age as fields, and then I put into person B the value of person A. Wrapper procedure for outputting advanced data types. For reference objects, in order to display their contents, we must use the wrapper procedure, which is used for outputting the string representation of their contents for advanced data types. Like this. Let's echo person A and B. Echo wrapper person A, and let's copy this line, and B, and run this. Here we go, they display their contents. You can also use square brackets to dereference a reference object in an echo procedure in order to display them. So let's try that out, copy this, give an empty echo to separate them, and remove wrapper and square brackets, and let's run this. Here we go, it displays its contents the same, except for the person ref, which is the data type of our values. Wrapper within the current soon to be extinct garbage collector outputs the actual memory address of the reference object, while with GC org it would display PTR and value. As you can see, echoing person B displays the same as person A, because both variables now contain the same data, a reference object allocated on the heap. So if we change any of the two variables, the changes will be reflected on the other variable. Let's try this. Let's type person a dot h is 100. Now let's echo both of them and run this. Here we go. Previously, both were 20 h and now they're 100. Reference objects are passed by reference. This means that for reference objects, we do not need to use the var keyword to modify the reference object if we pass it as an argument to a procedure. This is because reference objects are never copied. They are passed by reference, meaning the location of their memory. This is how it looks like to use normal objects and modify them directly with the var keyword. Here we have this object's definition. Then here we have proc called change name to which we give it a parameter of type var person this var will allow us to modify it directly. So just simply person.name to some value. And now for the reference object version, simply ref keyword to make the reference object, no more var keyword over here, and the square brackets for the referencing. New procedure for reference types. For all object types, which are objects and tuples, the new procedure can be used to create a new object of its type, an empty one with a safe traced reference to it. Safe traced references are what references are. Pointers, on the other hand, are not. Pointers are mainly to be used when interfacing with other programming languages libraries, which is called the Foreign Function Interface, or FFI in short. So let's try this new procedure out. So here I have defined a new normal object with data as its string. So now let's make a variable to use it. Var normal object is new procedure and then it's object type so normal object and then echo it now this echo errors that is because like i said earlier that the new procedure creates a new object and returns a safe traced reference to it 
which means that we are essentially working with a reference object, but not quite. It works the same as a reference object, so we must dereference it via the square brackets. More on the stack and the heap later. Reference object use cases. The main reason to use reference objects is when you want shared ownership. Shared ownership is when multiple objects all use share another object. This object must be a reference object in order for this to work. Here we have a simple example with three objects. Shared object as a reference object which will be shared, used by object A and object B by its value fields. So here in this line we initialize shared object and give its data field share data as string and then in these two lines we initialize object A and B to give its fields value the whole shared object. And lastly we echo their values by typing their name dot value field and then dot data to access shared objects data field. Now let's F6 and display this. Here we go. They both have shared data. Another reason to use reference objects is when you have very big objects, which would be expensive for normal objects to be copied around. But NIMS compiler automatically passes such big objects by reference. So really use normal objects unless you require shared ownership. NIMS memory management. Brief mention that before version 1.4.2, NIM used a deferred cycle counting GC garbage collector with a simple mark and sweep backup GC. But since 1.4.2, you can now use NIM's brand new ORC GC, which will soon be the default GC, though currently it's not yet the default. GC ORC will provide much better collection of garbage created by our code. This garbage is mostly generated by sequences and by reference objects, the topic of this video and other data structures that live on the heap. More on that a bit later. Also, GC Org provides much better FFI for interfacing with other programming languages libraries, amongst many other benefits. It's simply better. For more information on Org, see the blog post Introduction to Arc Org in NIM. The link is in the description. Also, NIM's memory model is a multi-paradigm memory model. And with that said, it has multiple garbage collector options and you can even turn it off completely. But you really must know what you're doing. Check out the link in the description for more information on that. Variables in every programming language are named memory regions where the contents data of our variables is stored. We also call this type of variables value object types or value objects. Value objects always implies copies when making assignments. These value objects are created on the stack NIM stores values in two different ways. There are values created on the stack and values created on the heap. Values created on the stack. Everything made within scopes will be freed when their scope ends. This is something I have explained before in a previous video, but let's refresh our memories. So if you make a procedure, say test, and in it we make a new variable called new var with value 10, and then if we try to access it with an echo procedure from outside of the procedure, this will error because the variable doesn't exist. Same goes for other scopes, say conditional statements like here. This will also not work because the variables are out of scope, no longer exist. Values created on the heap. To repeat what I said earlier, reference objects are allocated on the heap, their memory that is. This heap memory is managed by the NIMS garbage collector. Variables allocated on the heap will have their memory freed when all references to them are gone. First example, you made a few reference objects in a block statement and you only use those reference objects inside that block statement. So when the block statement would be over, all references to those reference objects would be destroyed and thusly NIMS garbage collector would free the memory used by those reference objects. Example two, is the code that I used to explain shared ownership. If we set shared object variable to nil, empty value for reference objects, not its fields, of course, object A and object B will no longer be able to access sh the shared object. Let's demonstrate this by setting shared object to nil and try to access object A and object B afterwards. So shared object nil and then echo, let's copy this. Also another echo to separate and now let's run this F6. No changes yet because we only used shared object to set the value field of object A and object B once before shared object variable has changed. 
this is automatic in a loop say a games loop so let's set them again so let's use this code and copy remove the echoes and then assign shared object that data and repeat this for object b and then let's echo and f6 here we go illegal storage access error meaning we are trying to access shared objects data which is now nil not pointing to any memory location which after being set to nil has had its memory freed by the garbage collector if you would like to learn a bit more in depth, but not fully in depth on NIM's memory management, check out Zev's blog, NIM Memory. The link is in the description. Lastly, I would like to mention for more advanced users of NIM to check out the dot acyclic and dot cursor annotations for manual optimization of your programs. The links are in the description. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, as well as click the bell icon if you liked it. You can also follow me on Twitter of the same name and support me on Patreon. If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description, as well as the link to this video's documentation script as a form of offline tutorial. Have fun!